Okay, it's been recorded now. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to uh, Jenkins uh, Summer Project Demos. Um, so yeah, it's quite unusual session because at this time we have uh, presentations by three projects. Um, we will have presentations by Google Summer of Code students, by Outreach students, and also by uh, Community British uh, students. It's a new program started uh, by uh, Jenkins Project recently, and yeah, we just have one student. Uh, but yeah, today we have uh, four presentations and all the uh, presentations are about JSOC. So probably, I'll, yeah, I'll just switch to my screen share. This is my screen? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, today it's about uh, Google Summer of Code mostly. And I'll spend some time uh, just to, to say what is Google Summer of Code, because yeah, not everybody knows it. Uh, Google Summer of Code is one of the biggest uh, programs uh, for open source organizations. Um, basically, it uh, provides uh, students opportunity to work in op on open source projects and to get uh, mentors from open source projects. A student uh, get a stipend and basically they work full time for three months. Um, and yeah, there are also additional things like community bonding. Uh, so yeah, it's a pretty big project. Uh, 2019 is a 15th year of JSOC. Uh, over during the timeline of the program, there were uh, more than 16,000 students. Uh, you see everything on the slides. Uh, but yeah, uh, basically, it just dwarfs uh, any other open source program uh, available now. Um, and the Jenkins project is happy to participate in Google Summer of Code. Uh, 2019 is the third year in JSOC. Before that, uh, we participated in 2016 and in 2000. 19. Yeah, for us, this year is also the biggest project. Uh, we have uh, seven projects. Uh, we started from seven projects. Uh, five of them have reached final evaluations. So five projects will be presented um, uh, today and on Monday um, for JSOC. If you're interested to know more about Google Summer of Code, we have a sub-project page for that. You can just navigate to our uh, website. And here you can find information about all projects we have. You can find uh, info, uh, contacts like mailing list, chat, uh, which we use for all kinds of communication. And if you're interested uh, about a particular project here, you can also navigate there. For example, if you're interested uh, in remoting, you can go here and here you can find links specific to the remoting channel. Uh, so yeah, uh, you can use this site as a landing page. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I do not want uh, to spend uh, a lot of time on introductions. Uh, so, I would like to say thanks to our Google Summer of Co students. Um, all of them spent a lot of time uh, to on the program, and they spent a lot of time to apply, to prepare, and uh, yeah, all of them have delivered really good uh, results this year. So, we are happy uh, to present them. Uh, to the public. Um, in addition to that, we have uh, had dozens of students who applied, who also made some contributions as a part of application. We had uh, many mentors uh, working with students, uh, around 30 mentors this year. And uh, yeah, also thanks to Orc Admins and uh, to all other contributors uh, who helped uh, to make these projects happen. Um, if you're interested uh, in JSOC, uh, yeah, uh, as always, uh, we look uh, for mentors, for students, and for project ideas. Uh, so, yeah, if you have uh, an idea what you would like to improve in Jenkins, um, and you have no time for that, maybe Google Summer of Code is an opportunity because, yeah, basically, if you're ready to mentor, uh, if you can find other contributors who are interested in the project, you can run it. And this year, we have uh, several examples of uh, such projects which have been facilitated uh, by individuals. Um, so yeah, it's a great opportunity. Okay, uh, today uh, we have uh, four presentations. Uh, so we'll, we'll start from presentation by Natasha about plugin installation manager. Then we will have presentation about role strategy performance improvements, uh, about uh, working hours plugin, and uh, about remoting of Apache Kafka. Um, before we start, um, uh, does any of our admins uh, want uh, to add something? I would like to say thanks to all the students for their hard efforts. Uh, super, super amazing. So thank you very much for a summer well done. 
Thank you to the mentors and the org admins. Mm -hmm. Thanks for everybody being here on the call to watch this. It's very, very awesome to see all of this come together. Yeah, right. So if you have any questions uh, during uh, the presentation, um, you can use Zoom chat. I believe it's enabled. Is it? Yeah, there is Zoom chat. So, okay. So you can uh, just ask here if you have um, any question. You can also go to our uh, Gitter chat um, even after the presentation. Uh, to, and yeah, we have all the contributors around there. So we, you can also ask questions here. We will be monitoring it. Um, in addition to that, if you want uh, to join uh, other projects, uh, yeah, other presentation, uh, there will be another online meetup um, on the Monday. So you can just use Jenkins online meetup. I believe this is the uh, original source where you find found these links. Here there is another meetup on Monday. So you can just subscribe for, for that and we will have another uh, four presentations there, or maybe five. Let's see. So yeah. Right here. Okay, and that's it from me. Mm, Natasha, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you can just start screen sharing. Okay. Um, I have a quick question about Zoom. So I have it set up so that I can uh, like just uh, switch like desktops for my Mac. Is there a way I can share my whole screen or do I have to select like an application to show? Uh, so what happened? Sorry. Sorry, go ahead. A share button uh, shares the entire screen by default. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Um, okay, so you, can you guys see my screen? Yes, we can. Yeah. All right, so hi everyone. Um, I'm Natasha and um, today I'm gonna be talking about the progress that I've made in the last month on the plugin installation manager library slash CLI tool. Um, so just, just a quick overview for people who might not be familiar with the project. There were a couple, um, I guess there were two sort of main goals of it. Um, the first was to improve plugin tooling. So being able to allow users to um, set up all their plugins before an instance of Jenkins even starts. And then um, to also try to make that process easier and more transparent and um, give users better control of which plugins they want installed. And then um, the second goal was to create a library that could then be reused across um, different areas of Jenkins where plugin management is done. So just a quick recap of what I did in phases one and two before I get into the details of what I've done for phase three. So um, for phase one, I sort of started this process of converting um, the Jenkins Docker install plugins bash script to Java and then um, created the basic structure and skeleton of the CLI and library. And then phase two worked on just trying to refine that. So improving the parsing and the Docker compatibility, and then um, also being able to um, view more information about the plugins that you're gonna download, um, both figuring out, uh, I guess, what plugins are gonna be uh, downloaded prior to download, and then um, seeing if there are any up available updates or security warnings for those plugins. Um, so phase three mostly focused on um, cleaning up and adding tests for a lot of the stuff that was done in phase two, but there were also a couple um, new things and improvements we tried to do as well. So the first of those was just improving the plugin download speed. So in kind of the first versions of um, the Java tool, um, plugin download speed was significantly slower than the original bash script. So we worked to try to um, speed that up and, and make it um, almost comparable. And then um, the next thing was just if there are any issues um, downloading or resolving the plugin dependencies, um, just throwing an exception sooner instead of waiting until it ends. And then um, uh, previously, a user could sort of either specify that they wanted to see information about plugins or download them, but not really do both at the same time. So we try to make that process a little bit more flexible by um, just adding an option um, 
it for the CLI tool to specify if you want to um, skip downloading. And then we also added um, a check to see if the Jenkins War version is lower than um, what's required in the plugin metadata. So um, trying to find some issues before you even um, start Jenkins. And then I'll talk a little bit more about this later, but I was also able to attend DevOps World Jenkins World to present my project. Um, so that was like another thing that I did this coding phase. Okay, so I'll just do um, a quick demo of some of the, the newer features that um, were implemented. Okay, um, so here I have, uh, I'll just show you, I have a plugin file with my, the plugins that I want to download or um, see, I guess in this case, just sort of see information about them. So in this case, I'm going to um, list uh, information about those plugins. So being able to see what are all the, uh, what's the final set of all the plugins that would be downloaded, and then do any of those have any security warnings. Um, and then this was, uh, we also had this new CLI flag where, um, CLI tool flag where um, you can specify that, no, I don't wanna um, download these plugins right now. I just wanna see this information. So I'll just do a quick demo of that. So we're gonna go uh, get all that information and you can go ahead and display that without actually downloading them. And uh, conversely, if uh, by default, uh, the plugins will automatically be downloaded. So um, you can go ahead and list that information um, and also download them at the same time. So this, is, uh, uh, this was based off of feedback given um, from some of the other community members that um, doing, uh, more or less having the default to download, but being able to see that information at the same time was um, useful for uh, using this in Docker. Okay. Um, and then uh, the other uh, thing that uh, I was gonna demo is uh, more or less seeing if you have uh, version compatibility between um, your Jenkins WAR file and your plugin. Um, so in this case, we, we specified uh, the Jenkins WAR file, and then I also specified the verbose um, option so you can see more information about that. Um, and then I also requested this plugin, the workflow support plugin. So if we take a look at some of uh, the metadata for that, so for the workflow support, um, you can see that the required core is um, 2.121.1. Um, and if we go ahead and run this, you'll see that our Jenkins version is um, slightly lower. So this will go ahead and throw an error and let you know that uh, this plugin requires a greater version of Jenkins um, than the WAR file that you specified. Okay, so um, I also just wanted to briefly talk about uh, my time at DevOps World, Jenkins World, because that was um, another big part of um, what I did this coding period. So that conference was four days in San Francisco, and I was able to present my project during the CDF Contributor Summit um, and the Jenkins Community Lunchtime demos. Um, and then uh, when I wasn't presenting, I was able to attend sessions, talk to community members, um, let, them know, let them know about my project, and um, get some feedback. So it was a really awesome experience, and um, thank you so much to Jenkins and CloudBees for uh, giving me that opportunity. And then I have a blog post that I wrote about that that um, I have a link to at the end if you want to read more about that. And then um, the last thing that I just wanted to touch on is um, it's not always smooth sailing. So there are a couple challenges of this coding phase as well. So um, in the original script, if you have two versions of the same plugin, um, then the newer version will direct, or the higher version of the plugin will directly replace the lower version. Um, and if you have any dependencies of the lower version that aren't um, included in the higher version, um, these never actually get cleaned up. So you can end up installing some plugins that aren't needed. Um, so this is something that I tried fixing, but uh, this ended up being way more complicated um, than I realized it was going to be. So, um, yeah, so I still don't have like a, a full solution for that, but um, I just wanted to kind of share that was um, something that was uh, tried to do and um, ended up being uh, more difficult than anticipated. Okay, so what's next? Uh, we're really close to releasing uh, the first official version. Um, so hopefully 
uh, within the next week, we'll go ahead and release that and then submit a PR to the um, official uh, Docker image to get that incorporated. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, we're really close and um, hopefully we'll, uh, that'll happen uh, pretty soon here. Okay, so uh, here's some links and more information. Um, so I have linked uh, my project page and then um, the Gitter chat, um, the repository, and then I also have a link to that blog and um, the PR that I mentioned that um, ended up being pretty challenging. So um, I think that's all I had. Uh, are there any questions that anyone has? We have one question from uh, JC Glick in the chat. Um, uh, is uh, the plugin manager tool uh, able to share a cache between Maven, uh, for example, via Maven repository um, directory? Um, sorry, do you mind repeating that? Yeah, I can just put it to the chat. Okay, so I'll go ahead. Yeah, this one. Or you can find it in JSOC chat on your own. Um, I don't. Um, okay, so yeah, we. I not currently, but um, if that is something that it like that would be really helpful for for people. Um, he, he's more than welcome to submit um a, a Jira ticket. Um, so right now, uh, there we don't really have any. I guess like compatibility or support for um, Maven, but that's definitely something that other people have uh, requested. And um, yeah, I think that's a really good idea. So uh, that's something that we can look into for sure. Any other um, questions? Thank you, Natasha. By the way, JC should be on the call. Yeah. So yeah, I have um, another question about um, uh, the library part. Uh, so yeah, uh, CLI works pretty well, and uh, yeah, we are looking forward uh, to have the final release to adopt it in our flows. Uh, but uh, there is also a library part. So what's uh, the current state of uh, APIs and whether it can be consumed as a library now? Um, I think it's close i guess i would uh yeah i think it could be started to be incorporated in other areas um i guess i would definitely want maybe some confirmation on that but um i think it generally works pretty well so um yeah it would, uh yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. um yeah i guess i Feel free to look it over and uh, I guess you could tell me if it's close. Um, I, I think so, but um, I would just want like, yeah, some kind of confirmation or um, I guess a little bit more information about that. Yeah. I'll yeah, try, I think, uh, yeah, sorry, Oh, sorry, I was like, I think it can be because the development was done. Um, Tasha did a good job of separating out the pieces that involved the CLI into its own separate module and the library does all the processing of the plugins. So as well, and, it's well Java docked, so I think you can use it as a library today if it if you needed to. Okay. I'll try. I just started the uh, custom work packager to do zero work, and yeah, okay. I think it's a good opportunity to try it out. Yeah, mm -hmm. that'd be great. Thanks. Thank you. So, any other questions? It's not. Christine, would you like to add something about the project? Um, I guess like it's it was a really great summer, and I think Natasha did a really good job. The tool is already being used by some people, so like that's that's really nifty to see it, you know, actually helping some people's workflows already. And it was really like her presentation to sell the pictures and sell the blog posts. It was really like nifty to be able to go to. Um, Jenkins World, DevOps World, and even talk more about Google Summer of Code and share work that she's done. So good job, Natasha. It was, it's been a great summer. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? Oh, actually, can I also say like, thank you to the, everyone in the community who's helped with this project as well. Um, there's been a lot of like really great community involvement. And I think it's one of the um, shows like the best parts of open source. 
So really wanted to highlight as thank you everyone for helping out too. Thank you. Okay, uh, our next uh, presenter is uh, Buda Sharma. He will present uh, his project about role strategy performance improvements and other projects uh, which uh, we are currently a part of this project. Hi. Yeah. Um, I'll just share my screen. Okay, um, can you see? Not yet. Okay, now it works. <clears throat> um, hi everyone, I'm Abhide and uh, I've been working to improve the performance of the role strategy plugin uh, for my GSOC project. Um, so uh, let's just discuss three things um, uh, in today's presentation. Um, the first one is running micro benchmarks uh, in Jenkins plugins and um, recently it was added to Jenkins core. Um, uh, after that, we'll discuss about the performance improvements to the role strategy plugin. And then um, I'll introduce about the new folder authorization plugin. So um, the project uh, was initially started because uh, there were a lot of performance issues reported uh, to the role strategy plugin. Um, uh, most of them uh, were basically um, due to uh, repeatedly checking uh, regular expressions. And um, uh, checking of these regular expressions wasted a lot of time. So, um, so let's start with the benchmarking framework first. Um, so the benchmarking framework allows you to run um, JMH benchmarks, that is Java Micro Benchmark Harness, uh, which is an open JDK project. And um, this framework is now available uh, to everyone uh, through Jenkins Test Harness uh, 2.51. Um, we've added a couple of other things uh, to make it easier for all developers to integrate um, this into their plugin. So um, we have a Maven profile in the plugin form um, for running benchmarks locally. And we have a pipeline step uh, in the Jenkins pipeline library for running them uh, during a pull request builds on CI Jenkins IO. And um, we support configuration as code um, for configuring the instance that is started for the benchmarks. Um, you can check out our blog post uh, to learn more about how to run these benchmarks. So um, we added uh, the Maven profile for running the benchmarks to plugin form. Uh, and Jenkins test harness contains um, the benchmarking framework. Um, and um, configuration is code plugin uh, version 1.21 added the ability to um, configure these benchmarks um, using configuration as code. Um, then um, we added the uh, pipelines uh, step to um, the pipeline library. And uh, this was all implemented uh, in the role strategy plugin. So all the benchmarks um, are run as a part of our pipeline right now. Um, now, um, and these benchmarks helped us to improve the performance. Um, so um, there were a couple of major changes made to the role strategy plugin uh, to improve its performance. Um, so the role strategy plugin, um, for every permission checking request that it got, um, it used to calculate and go through all of the regular expressions um, every time. So uh, to prevent that, we've added uh, we, a cache of the roles that match a given regular expression. So um, this, ca this cache gets invalidated uh, whenever a new role gets added. So um, it maintains the coherence of data. Um, so this has given us significant performance improvements. And so basically this was a trade-off between uh, CPU time and memory. And uh, the JMH benchmarks um, um, in the plugin show improvements of up to 3,300%. Uh, the next change we made was to cache the implying permissions. So Jenkins permission model uh, follows a tree-like structure and one permission can be implied by the others. Um, for example, there's the Jenkins administrator permission that um, gives uh, all administrators uh, the access to read any job. So um, whenever the role strategy plugin was asked to check for a permission, uh, to check if a user has a permission, it used to calculate um, all of these uh, implying permissions. So to avoid doing that again and again, we added a ca uh, we store uh, these implying permissions when the class is loaded. Uh, for Jenkins, that would be when the plugin is loaded and we can um, access them whenever we need. Um, we used um, the JMH benchmarks for measuring the performance improvements, and these reports were generated uh, during the pull request builds, uh, and the results were um, 
visualize using JMH Visualizer. Uh, so now after all of these improvements, um, we were able to see performance improvements in benchmarks of about 10,000%. Uh, so these are uh, synthetic benchmarks as well as uh, some benchmarks for use cases uh, provided by users. Um, you can uh, check out uh, these pull requests uh, for the benchmark results. Now, um, let's go on to the folder authorization plugin. Uh, this was a brand new plugin uh, that was created uh, during GSOC uh, to avoid some issues that were present in role strategy plugin. And uh, the 1.0 release was um, launched and is available to everyone now. Um, you can check out the blog post um, on um, the folder authorization plugin to learn more about it. Uh, this permission, this plugin uh, freezes from the backward compatibility of uh, role strategy plugin. Um, so some features uh, of the plugin are um, just like role strategy, uh, we have three types of roles. We have global roles, uh, uh, which are applicable everywhere inside Jenkins. And um, we have folder roles, which work on uh, folders from cloud-based folder plugin. And they can be used for multiple users and multiple folders. Um, the major feature of folder roles we have is the permissions through a folder role are inherited uh, to all of its children. And uh, finally, we have agent roles uh, for configuring permissions for agents connected to Jenkins. Um, for, all, for managing roles, we have uh, REST APIs with uh, Swagger JSON support, and we support uh, Jenkins configuration as code out of the box. So um, this is what a configuration is code uh, YAML looks like for the plugin. And um, you can check out some more examples um, inside the folder authorization plugin. Um, we have uh, the Swagger API for the plugin, um, which allows you to download um, um, stubs and tools for running uh, these APIs from multiple languages. Um, now let's go for a quick demo of the plugin. Um, yeah. So uh, this is what the plugin configuration screen looks like. And so you have global roles and you can add roles. Similarly, you have folder roles and agent roles. So um, we have a couple of uh, roles here. We have our admin role, um, which gives all of the administrator permissions to users. And we have a role uh, which gives uh, the um, overall read permissions to um, all authenticated users. Um, for folder roles, um, these folder roles can be added on multiple folders. So let's just talk about the couple of roles we have here. Um, we have um, a role which works on um, folder one's child folder. and um, this applies to user one and user three. Uh, this role gives um, the permission to, um, um, to cancel, create, and delete a job here. And we have uh, the read folder one, which uh, gives user one and user two the permissions to um, read the folder one. Uh, if, we log, if we go as the admin to the home screen, Yeah, so we have three folders here, and um, let's just log in as the prime as user one to see how it works. So uh, the user one does not have the access to uh, the other two folders, and when we go inside, um, the user has um, permissions for reading uh, all items inside this folder uh, which were inherited. And um, so if we go to this job. Uh, the user would not have the permissions to run a build or create or delete uh, anything here. Um, and if you go into the child folder, um, you can see that the user gets the permissions here. So you can just run the build and um, delete the project. So uh, similarly, uh, through an agent role, we gave uh, this user permission to delete agent one. And um, so as you can see here, he, uh, the user can delete the agent. 
and um, for agent two, uh, he does not have the permission, so it's not here. Um, after that, um, I'd like to show you about uh, Swagger APIs. Uh, they're all hosted on Swagger Hub, and you can uh, download the configuration from here. So this contains all this, uh, the schemas of the post requests uh, that, um, uh, that are used to modify the roles. And um, if you add a server here, um, for your own Jenkins instance, uh, it'll generate um, curl methods um, and command line and for in various languages. So you can download um, the client SDK and interact with the plugin. Um, so let's just compare the performance of the folder authorization plugin um, with that of role strategy to dot one three, uh, which contains all of the performance improvements that um, I earlier mentioned about. So the global roles um, here um, over um, the permission checks for global roles are up to 934 times faster than uh, the global roles uh, in role strategy plugin. Uh, this was for an instance with uh, 500 global roles and um, 500 users. Uh, for folder roles, um, the permission checks are 15 times faster than the equivalent uh, regular expression implementation in role strategy. Um, this uh, this uh, was obtained for a benchmark in which there were 250 projects, uh, which were organized in uh, two level deep folders on an instance with about 150 users. So uh, you can just check out uh, this poll request here uh, for uh, comparing the benchmark results and knowing more about these benchmarks. Uh, so some of the challenges I faced here was to have uh, efficient permission checks. Uh, so it was um, uh, really hard um, and um, we had a lot of discussions with my mentors to produce an efficient solutions for these permission checks. So as a result, uh, the global role permission checks are now happen in constant time. That is big of fun. Uh, the other thing was configuration is code support. So uh, configuration as code plugins uh, data bound constructor did not support um, export or import of sets. So um, uh, a couple of pull requests were made to the uh, Jcast plugin, and uh, these were released in um, version 1.24. Um, the next challenge I had was to have um, safe serialization and to have thread safety for the um, for the permit for the modification of roles. So uh, we implemented um, all of these um, API calls. Um, by making the authorization strategy object immutable. Uh, you can check out the pull request um, to see how this was implemented. And um, um, I finally, I'd like to thank my great mentors, Oleg, Runje, and Supun. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, please do share your feedback, suggestions, and comments to me uh, through either the role strategy plugin Gator chat or through Jenkins developer mailing list. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Are there any questions? We have one question in the uh, Gitter chat. So, yeah, I can pronounce it. Uh, so JC says that uh, you shouldn't have patched configuration as code plugin. Instead, uh, role strategy should have been uh, normalized to use uh, list instead of sets. Uh, what do you what do you say about uh, that Abida? Um, for us, um, sets gave us an enormous advantage um, in checking whether a role contained um, a given SID or not, um, which helped us to um, get um, the to check if the if the set contained the user's SID or not. Um, in without going over without going through all of uh, the roles that were there, mm -hmm. all of the seats that were there. Uh, if we were to use, okay. Um, mm -hmm. um, so, using. Um, sets uh, simplified how we would uh, serialize um, the object, uh, but um, 
Um, it looks like there is a connectivity issue, maybe on my side. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, so I don't really have an answer for that because uh, this was not something we discussed um, during the project. Um, so I think we can um, go over the folder authorization plugin and um, try to see how we um, look to fix that. Mm -hmm. yeah, so just uh, to add to Abida's uh, response, yeah, usage of sets, uh, is not widely uh, on uh, Jenkins plugins, but uh, there are several use cases for that. Not on the real strategy plugin, on, uh, on the folder authorization. So from configuration as code perspective, it was really useful uh, to have uh, this patch. So we added uh, compatibility for a few more plugins. And also we, another patch delivered by VDA allowed us uh, to pass empty collections on now. Uh, which simplified uh, uh, many configurations um, uh, for JCASC users. So I think that uh, for us it was a really a good improvement, even if it was not strongly necessary in this particular case. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm, so yeah, another question here from the Zoom chat is a question from Martin. Does the role strategy plugin have anything to do with the view regular expressions? Um, viewing regular expressions as in? What I mean by the view is in Jenkins, there's, um, there's folders, but there's also, um, as I guess as a legacy feature in Jenkins, there's a, a different, you can create different views that um, okay, yeah, like, I, like, they look like tabs at the top of um, at the top of the jobs that are described down below. That's my question. Uh, so um, role strategy does not allow you to um, configure permissions for views right now. Okay. Uh, there are global roles uh, which um, give you blanket permissions for um, managing those views, but um, you cannot manage them for individual views. Yeah. There is okay. a long standing uh, feature request for that in the role strategy plugin. Um, but uh, yeah, due to uh, multiple complexities, mostly in the web UI, it has never been integrated. So maybe later um, when we have better web UI and the next presentation will be uh, by Jack, who will uh, talk about some opportunities for that. Maybe after that, we will be able to easily expand uh, to other item types using Jenkins. Okay, any other questions? Okay, then uh, I'll add a few words as a mentor. And yeah, this time uh, Abhide presents before Parishai, so I will be the first market. So yeah, basically it's uh, this project uh, went really well. Um, and yeah, I would say that for me, it felt rather like two Google Summer of Codes because firstly, we got a, a performance uh, benchmarking engine, uh, which became a part of the standard Jenkins tool set with all the documentation, with uh, even pipeline uh, library integrations. So basically it's ready to be used by any plugin maintainer. And for me, only that felt like a fully completed uh, Google Summer of Code project and Abude was able to do that uh, during the first code phase. Um, and uh, after that, uh, there was a, a lot of patches uh, to different components, a lot of collaboration in the community. So yes, uh, there were important changes in the role strategy plugin. There is a new folder authorization plugin. Uh, creation of new plugin wasn't in our plan. Uh, it was initiated by Abide, and I believe that it's really good uh, for Jenkins users who want to get a better performance for folder-based setups, which is quite common nowadays. 
Um, in addition to that, yeah, we have got a number of patches in configuration as code plugin, not only the patches which were mentioned today in the presentation. So I think uh, this project has a huge uh, value to the Jenkins community. And yeah, we uh, worked uh, really well uh, collaborating uh, in the project, uh, in the community. Um, uh, we had maybe a dozen of contributors uh, involved at uh, different stages. So yeah, uh, thanks a lot to you, Dan. Uh, for me, it was a really a great project. And yeah, I'm looking forward to continue it after JSOC, if you're interested. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for your support uh, throughout GSOC. Okay. Um, thank you, Tom. Any other words to add? Anyone? Okay, looks on. So yeah, let's uh, move on uh, to the third presentation. Uh, it will be a presentation uh, by uh, Jack Shen, who will present uh, new improvements in the uh, working hours plugin and also some uh, uh, new approaches uh, to work with uh, React based plugins in Jenkins. Jack, are you ready? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Yeah. Okay, uh, can you see this slide? Uh, hello? Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. And, uh, okay, uh, hi everyone. Uh, this is uh, Jack from Working Hours Plugin, and uh, this is the, uh, the third presentation uh, during this summer. And uh, today I'm gonna share two major things, and uh, one is the Working Hours Plugin updates, and uh, the other is uh, the boiler, the React Berkeley for Jinx plugin, and actually it's a React plugin template. Uh, okay, and uh, for working hours plugin and uh, the one of the up updates uh, is uh, we add holiday presets uh, to the plugin and uh, we add presets manager to, uh, to help, is to help uh, the developer to extend presets and, uh, and using this process manager and uh, uh, we we also add Chinese holidays and uh, in the long run we can add uh, any pre any preset any holiday presets we, we want and uh, the other is the test and we add excluded excluded date test and the time range judgment test uh, uh, the current status uh, of the working hours plugin is uh, we all it will be released uh, uh, in, in a week, uh, approximately before August the 13th, the 30th. And, uh, and the second part I, I do really want to uh, introduce is uh, the React plugin template. Uh, this is a, a boilerplate project which, ha which can help develop the Jenkins plugin UI with React. And uh, this is also which, uh, is extracted from the working hours plugin during this summer. So why using a React plugin template? Um, there are many reasons. Uh, the first maybe we need to make the plugin UI much customized uh, because uh, like traditional Jenkins plugin are using uh, a render system like and called Jelly and, uh, and it's a, so it doesn't have uh, so many JavaScript uh, uh, like interfaces or some extensibilities to help uh, us to have user to enable user to make the UI customized. And we may uh, just use some uh, have some already defined uh, components. And uh, if we use React, we can take full control of the UI. Uh, also, the second. Uh, some new developers may prefer modernize the tools uh, like React instead, instead of Jelly. And because uh, as for me, uh, at the first time I tried to learn about working hours plugin and um, I found that uh, it's based on Jelly and that, takes, uh, that really takes me a lot of time to uh, get, get, get familiar with it. Uh, and also I believe that uh, most newcomers uh, to build a Jenkins 
plugin are uh, maybe much familiar with React or any other advanced JavaScript frameworks like uh, Angular or Vue. And uh, so it may take a lot, uh, like a lot of uh, cost to learning how to develop plugin uh, in Jelly. So maybe I'm, uh, so, so, so for this, I'm thinking about making a template to help the, new, the, the newcomers to develop their first plugin. Uh, also, plugins dependency may, come, may have lots of conflict on things like uh, versions because uh, if uh, on one single page, uh, like there are two plugins want to uh, share the screen and uh, they like sometimes they will always use a browser import is just like a link in the HTML and uh, these two packages if they are used a different uh, version if they are used two different versions and uh, the later version will uh, like uh, will override the first version and uh, it will cause lots of conflicts and uh, the uh, another uh, reason will be uh, polyfills like um, prototype dot prototype dot js and uh, uh, they are added before uh, like uh, a long time ago and uh, it it may block us uh, using some new browser feature like you know uh, many browser eyes are supporting like uh, some advanced advanced uh, array methods like map and uh, list and uh, some other uh, for example, take uh, take map for example, and uh, uh, the the map defined by prototype prototype .js is really different from the process uh, map function, and uh, which may cause uh, severe problems. Also, we want to use npm packages to optimize workflow, and uh, you know there are so many. Uh, oh. yeah. There are so many useful packages. Uh, so this this is the uh, templates features uh, we we got React integrated, and uh, so we can take full control of the UI. We and we use iframe, and it it can create a new JavaScript environment. We can uh, show the desired effect of uh, like of some polyfills. Also, we um, this the template has integrated an npm commands into maven lifecycle with the help of a uh, front-end maven plugin uh, also we use webpack and uh, it, it can help us reduce the size of the bundle and uh, it will also avoid some pollution on the global namespace and uh, it, it just will be a instant called function and also we are free to make requests and uh, we don't we we can use uh because chrome is a text chrome is a like Jenkins token is attached to Axios client, and uh, for now we can send requests uh, in the way we want to use. Also, we this template uh, gets expressed as a DB server, and uh, it will enable the user to run the React app in a standalone page, and uh, it will got uh, many features like live reload and uh, request block proxy. Uh, and also Axios as the HD client is a powerful client. Uh, so how does this template work? Uh, in short, it's, it, it's just uh, like putting a Webpack project inside a Maven project, and uh, this it's just by uh, it's just chaining the building results. Uh, the the building results is uh, so something like HTML and the JavaScript files and the, it just be copied to the plugins web app folder to make it accessible from the uh, iframe. It's just like the uh, diagram below. Uh, first, we use Webpack to bundle the React project and then we paste the output to the uh, source slash Webpack web app folder and uh, we then link it, link the uh, static files in an iframe like the link below. And then the iframe is rendered by Jelly, and uh, the results can be shown uh, as the React is running in browser. Also, why using iframe? Yeah, and uh, 
Drone thinking uh, has a long history and from when, and maybe at that time, the JSP or JL is widely used to render some web pages. Uh, I did a lot of polyfills like a prototype and is provided by, uh, that, 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 that was provided to give extensions to JavaScript, but for now, uh, the, the JavaScript extent uh, ability is uh, much stronger than before, but they are all added to the global namespace. And if we simply mount our React app to to, to a certain point, it will be disturbed from uh, on many uh, JavaScript methods. Oh, but uh, Iframe is using a new environment. It's like a shield can uh, block the conflicts from the uh, the other from the from the other libraries and the interference can be avoided uh, then this template also has an uh, integrated uh, Jenkins Chrome to HTTP client as Chrome is always default enabled in Jenkins uh, to prevent cross-site requests and uh, uh, each Ajax request is required to contain to contain a uh, Jenkins Chrome in the request header. And uh, we use the uh, plugin UI to render the jelly and um, it sets Chrome header and Chrome token to the frame. And then the, then the Axios instance inside the React project can grab header and the token and then, then attach it to each uh, request header. And then we can make uh, any request we want to. Also, we can use a lot of React libraries. Uh, These two screenshots is from Working Hours plugin, and uh, the on the left is the React date picker, and uh, the right is uh, a library called a library called RC slider. To uh, in this, we use it to, um, to create a slider for user to choose time range. And this is the template, and uh, I add a, a Entry in the management link uh, in the man system manager page. Also, and this is the plugin UI. It is the template UI. And the uh, current status: the the template has been transferred to Jenkins CI at this 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 link. And the blog post about the template is being reviewed. And uh, maybe uh, may need maybe need more feedbacks. And okay, uh, thanks for watching. And that this is all I have today. Yeah, uh, would you be able to show some examples of working hours plugin in life? Uh, I'm not running working hours plugin uh, for now. I but I'm running the the uh, the template for now, and uh, I think it's managing. And we this is the man. Entry for the React plugin template, mm. and inside the template, this is uh, just a sample to do list. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. So maybe we could have yeah. a demo after presentation by Long, if you're fine with it. Mm, sorry. Uh, so mm, yeah, if you could present it uh, after the presentation by Long. So maybe in 20 to 30 minutes, 20, it will be great. But if, if not, uh, not. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, maybe I'm gonna, I can run that after long. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and maybe for now that's all for my part. Okay, yeah, are there any approach. questions uh, to Jack? Thanks. We have a few questions in the Gitter channel, but I think that might be something we could take offline. Uh, they're from Jesse, so I think maybe uh, Jack and Jeff can answer those. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, uh, there was one comment about moving uh, the template to archetypes. So Jenkins project have an archetypes repository where we have templates for common tools, uh, like pipeline libraries, etc. So one of the comments from JC was uh, about moving uh, that template there once it's uh, finalized. And uh, yeah, another comment was about homogenize, but yeah, it definitely makes sense to take it offline. 
Okay, any other questions or comments? Um, hi, guys. Sorry, sorry. I joined late. I've I've been actually without internet most of this week. We're we're at the beach, but <laughs> I have it right now. I just wanted to to thank Jack for the the work he did on this plugin. Um, I, I think it's a great addition to the plugin, and I, I'm hoping that it will um, help other people that want to use React in their UIs to get a jump start. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. And uh, really, uh, Jenkins Web UI is one of uh, pretty well-known uh, issues in Jenkins. Yeah, there is a lot of attempts to improve that using various approaches, like, for example, a Blotion uh, plugin or embedded solutions like uh, warnings next generation plugin uh, mentioned by JC in the Gitter chat. Uh, so yeah, there is already a lot of uh, Jenkins plugins using React. And for example, uh, last year we had a, a code coverage API plugin, uh, which also uses React in order to display uh, coverage statistics and the details in a fancy way. So there are definitely ways to do that. Uh, our problem that we have no unified way and framework. Well, we have some uh, Jenkins uh, uh, design template and something like that, but it would be great to have a, a framework which can be easily consumed by the plugins. And yeah, uh, Jack uh, did a really great example of how it could uh, be used. Yeah, I'm looking forward uh, for this project to continue. Um, uh, there is another question from Frank uh, in the Zoom chat about customizing uh, parameterized building pages. Uh, so right now, uh, build pages, yeah, I'll probably answer this question because it's not strictly related uh, to the plugin. So right now, uh, play, uh, Jenkins pages are either written in Jelly or in Groovy, except uh, installation wizard. Uh, but uh, yes, once we have a stabilized framework, we also could improve uh, this page. Uh, right now, you still can customize it, for example, using a simple theme plugin. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is a partial solution at best. So yeah, a simple theme plugin allows adding custom CSS to change the style, or it allows um, adding uh, uh, yeah JavaScript to do advanced rendering. So yeah, it would be the recommended approach at the moment. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, uh, and uh, also I I, I got my. Uh, example running my uh, running working hours and uh, maybe can you maybe you can see it now. Oh yeah, if it's right. uh, yeah, uh, you're not screen sharing right now. Okay, I'm sharing my screen. Okay. Yeah, this is the uh, working hours plugin, uh, and uh, this time um, we had one thing: the uh, Chinese holiday presets, and and in the how the presets dialogue here? Uh, at first, there are no uh, some like Chinese holiday, and uh, this and I added some. Uh, this is a uh, Chinese holidays, and I add them manually uh, as a new Chinese holiday manager. And uh, this is the Chinese holiday we can apply it. It's got a new. It has presets the set date. It has already automatically set the days, and uh, we can save that, and it will. Uh, excluded that um maybe next year's june 25th and uh, the, uh, and um, below and above is a uh, uh, time range and uh, down below is the exclude dates we can add more much exclude dates yeah and uh, all the exclude dates will, will be um it, it, oh, will be all oh, will be excluding the uh, do the jobs uh, when 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 it's uh, uh, when the rule judge today is should be excluded, and uh, that's all for the Mocha's plugin. Yeah, I think the, the bigger part will be the template. Yeah. Thank you, and that's all for my for this part.
Okay. Uh, Jeff, would you like to add something about uh, working hours plugin? Um, so I, I was kicked out of the meeting, so I'm I'm not sure what what he um, what, what Jack presented. <laughs> um, I can I can basically describe why it why it was created. So so the idea is that if you have a job that that actually deploys to production, which um, I've, most of the teams I've been on have done, um, you might not want that to happen on holidays or in the evenings. Um, it's, it's probably better to have that happen during the day when you have all the engineers around. So it, it basically just gives you a way of providing times when jobs will be queued. So, so if somebody merges a PR in the, um, in the middle of the night, it, it'll wait till morning before it actually runs. Um, are, are there some other questions? I, I, I guess since I was out of the meeting for a bit, I, I, miss, I don't have a lot of context. That's fine, thank you. Okay, if there is no other questions or comments, we can proceed uh, to the next uh, presentation. Okay, so let's continue. Our last presentation uh, uh, from today is about is from Long about uh, remote uh, think of uh, Apache Kafka uh, with various uh, Kubernetes improvements. Long, are you ready? Okay, hi everyone. Uh, today I I would like to present about the phase three of uh, remote think over Apache Kafka with Kubernetes future project. And uh, first, I'd like to reintroduce myself. I am Long uh, from um, a university student from Vietnam. And my mentor for this project are uh, Andre and Kit, uh, Vu Tuan, and Sukpun. And Olaf is uh, also a technical advisor for this project. And uh, the proposal for the project was, um, uh, was also the, the previous version of remote over Apache Kafka plugin require user to uh, manually configure the entire system, which have uh, Zookeeper and Apache Kafka and uh, remote agent. And it also doesn't support dynamic agent provisioning. So user has to manually add agent to scale the bill. And uh, this project aims to solve those two problems. The first one is a solution to provision uh, uh, Apache Kafka. And the second one is uh, dynamic Asian provisioning in Kubernetes cluster. And uh, phase one summary, uh, in phase one, I implemented the first uh, objective, which is uh, launching Apache Kafka in Kubernetes feature. And I also write a skeleton for Helm chart. This is the web UI. So user can uh, input the uh, Kubernetes uh, connecting information and uh, press the start Kafka on Kubernetes button and everything will be set up after a few minutes. This is the glass diagram. And uh, in phase two, uh, I uh, implement, implemented the second objective, which is uh, Cloud API. To, uh, so after phase two, we can dynamically provision remote in Kafka agent in Kubernetes. And uh, also a completion of the Helm chart and supporting a uh, configuration as code. This is the web UI of the cloud where user can um, can type in the connecting information to a Kubernetes cluster and uh, also the uh, information about remoting Kafka agent. And this is the class diagram and uh, in phase three, in phase three, uh, finally uh, we have released version officially released version 2.0, and uh, there is a blog post on Jenkins.io, and also I also implemented a new feature which is retention strategy for cloud agent. Uh, retention strat strategy is like uh, the amount of time that uh, agent will stay idle after running the job before terminating. And uh, in phase three, I also write uh, lots of unit test integration tests 
to bring up test coverage to uh, 70%. And uh, I added Jekyll code to the Maven project so we can check for the coverage in a multi-module Maven project. And here we can, using Jekyll code, we can see the inst instruction coverage and uh, branch coverage. And the instruction coverage is uh, roughly 70%. And okay, uh, live demo. So you can find the instruction to run the run the demo in the redmi.md file. So the demo require a Kubernetes cluster, and I, here I will use Minikube and ham install on uh, Kubernetes. So we will run this command in the root directory. What this command do is it will download the ham dependencies and install the uh, ham chart. And after after in installing, it will output the instruction to get the password, get the URL, and uh, like using Jenkins configuration as code to config as you like. And we can check the installation with kubectl. So here we can see uh, Kafka is keeping is already running and Jenkins is initializing. And uh, Jenkins might take about two to three minutes to initialize. And while we are waiting for Jenkins, uh, let's talk about uh, the demo command. It will use a custom value in this file. And what uh, the custom value for demo is, uh, so for demo, I will disable persistent on both Kafka and Jenkins. You node port for service, install uh, shop DSL plugin, and uh, also I will reconfigure the uh, Kafka broker URL and Zookeeper URL and uh, configure a demo job, which is just a command echo hello world. And for Kafka and Zookeeper, I will um, make it standalone, running in standalone mode to save memory. Okay, let's see the Jenkins logs. Um, so we can uh, get Jenkins password by running this command. And uh, we can get Jenkins URL by running this command, but uh, I'm running Minikube on Mac, so uh, the Kubernetes is running in a virtual machine. So I have to use the virtual machine address instead for the node port. Here you can see the demo job. And uh, you can see the Zookeeper URL and Kafka URL is uh, pre configured by uh, conf configuration S code. And this uh, cloud to provision remote in Kafka agent. And uh, time to time in minutes to retain Asian when I do. This is the retention strategy. And if we set to zero, zero, then uh, the, the agent will terminate immediately after finishing a job. Okay, let's run this demo job. So currently we don't have any executor. So uh, the job will request the cloud to provision one worker So uh, 
uh, one worker is uh, one agent is provision. I'm not sure why sometimes there is glitch and uh, uh, Jenkins will uh, terminate the agent and provide another another one. So this is a remote in Kafka agent. And uh, if we if we uh, start it via cloud, then it will also start us a remote in Kafka part in Kubernetes. And uh, the agent part we connect with the master part via Kafka. And it might take about two minutes for for the agent part to connect to master. You said it takes around two minutes, right? Yeah. Which is connecting. Okay. Um, yeah, let's try uh, reinstall the ham again. Mm -hmm. And while we're waiting for it, uh, let's uh, talk about the future work. So for Uh, okay. Okay, you can finish and then uh, we can ask questions. Yeah, okay. Uh, so uh, for the future work after this, so I will switch the Docker Compose demo. So the Docker Compose demo is outdated with the current plugin version and uh, we need to fix that and uh, investigate about supporting character high, high availability. And um, those do item in long term plan epic.
So if you want to answer a question now, why not? Yeah. Uh, so, so compared to uh, the uh, JNLP agent used by Kubernetes plugin, uh, I think uh, using Kafka is um, is um, slower at first because the first one is have to transfer the draft file. Was there any was there anything else that you had? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna demo uh, the running of uh, remote Kafka agent via cloud with the uh, plugin, but uh, the last one has some what maybe relating to uh, the uh, new Kafka version. So I'm trying to uh, okay. reinstall reinstall the whole system and try again. Well, if it doesn't work, no worries. We already have a recorded demo from the previous phase. So if anyone interested to see it uh, working, uh, there is already a recording. Uh, we can just put the link. Yeah, that would be good. Okay, uh, so long, uh, maybe you could uh, finish uh, the presentation. Uh, and, uh, if you have some questions, we can discuss them. And if demo works by then, it's fine. If not, whatever. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, any questions uh, too long? Okay, yes. so there was a question uh, from uh, JC about uh, performance. Um, uh, have you compared uh, performance of Apache Kafka with GNLP4? Uh, so generally, uh, mm -hmm. I think the, the, the performance when running job is uh, the same uh, because um, like it's the same if the, the, the Kafka and uh, the Asian and Jenkins is in the same network, then uh, the transfer, the transferring of the classes over Kafka is uh, small enough to dominate and different. And uh, the, um, the agent startup uh, time, I think is uh, a bit longer than using JNLP. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, to add to that response, uh, one year ago with Bhutan, uh, we had some uh, experiments, but basically without uh, load testing, uh, there was no significant difference uh, between implementations. And I believe we didn't uh, do load testing at uh, that fire phase. John, well, please correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay, any other questions? Mm, yeah, I guess uh, there is a, uh, oh yeah. So it was a question about uh, the video. I will place the link to the video later in the chat. Okay, uh, Bhutan, would you like to add something? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, I think the, yeah, I mean, the last demo caused some problem, but I think it's fine because, uh, yeah, I mean, we can find the video for the second phase already has a demo for the Asian. So, to summarize, for the third phase, we, <coughs> sorry, uh, for the third phase, we already finished the release 2.0 for the plugin. And I think half of the third phase, we focus on improving the testing and code coverage for the plugin. So, I mean, in, in overall, I think long works very hard from the beginning of ESO until now, and we managed to deliver the project on schedule and with new features. And yeah, thank you so much for your contribution. And also, I want to thank you, uh, thank uh, Andre, who is not here today, for leading the mentoring effort of the project, so that we can yeah, have a plugin in the final today. Yeah, so thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, I found uh, the video link. Yep. So. Yeah, thanks a lot, uh, Long, for your presentation and for your work on this project. Uh, using uh, Jenkins with Kubernetes is really nice. And yeah, if someone interested to see Helm charts and other components which have been uh, created by Long, uh, there is a link to the YouTube video where he uh, provides more details about them. I'll paste it in Gitter as well. Okay, any questions or comments from participants? Okay. If not, uh, thanks a lot for watching uh, the presentations. Um, and yeah, thanks a lot uh, for all your feedback um, and comments. Uh, next Monday, we will have uh, another session with uh, two additional Sorry, with four additional presentations from uh, Google Summer of Code at Rich and Community Bridge uh, students. So yeah, stay tuned uh, for more demos. Okay. Yeah, I'll stop the recording then. So yeah, thanks again, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Bye.